start off with our bead on the hook and because the bead's going to be in the center of the fly I'm just going to go ahead and kick that back here for now and start my thread right here where I will tie in my mono eyes okay so what I've done is I've got some 50 pound mono and I'm going to burn with a lighter the eyes okay there we have our eyes and once they're cooled down we can go ahead and stick them on to the hook right, you want to tie these on with a little bit of room for tying off the fly in the end so you don't want to crowd the eye with these uh, mono eyes here and you just want to get them perpendicular and okay, now the next thing is to build up a little dam of thread right behind the eyes mono eyes and that will give us a little bit of room to put some dubbing in and we just make sure that that bead's going to go up again we're just leaving a little bit of space between the eyes and the bead with that thread now this is what I like to do just to hide because I don't want to tie off and tie back on I need to traverse back to the end of the hook and so what I'll do is I'll keep the thread right over the top of the bead and hold it in place with my finger and that way the thread will come over the top and that's what will be covered up by the the skin when we finish off the fly so that way when you're done we won't see the thread on the bead now that's just me being anal so it probably doesn't matter of course now once we have that we're going to work our way back and here I will tie in my tail fibers and what I've got for the tail fibers is just some Hungarian partridge just because I'm going to use these for the legs I'll go ahead and use them for the tail as well and break off eight or so fibers whatever we need and then I want to measure the body length to be the length of the tail and because this is imitating both a damsel and a betis or whatever else the trout may be eating. I don't need it to be as long or as short as either. Again, it's just more of a suggestive all-around pattern. So I'm going to size this, the the uh, tail, a little bit in between what a damsel would be and what a calabatus would be. Okay. Now, we also need to tie in, thinking in terms of what goes last forward. So the last thing will be our wire and I'm just using this copper brown UTC and with my tamer here you can actually just tie this right on or if you like you can clip the wire itself and now what I like to do is I like to keep my thread about the same length as where the tail is going to be so that the tape the body's nice and tapered so I'll tie that in right there and then we tie in our chewy skin and this is a great material if you haven't used it before it's a, a chewy skin UV chewy skin from hairline and I just cut it to strip about equal to the bead the width of the bead and then I like to cut a little uh, point so that I can tie that in right there at the tail and you only need a little bit of tie-in because you can stretch that stuff out and then I'm going to work my way back up the length of the body wrapping over the wire and the rest of the partridge that I have for the tail feathers and it just again it creates a nice tapered body so that you don't have a bunch of junk tied in at the tail okay and a couple ways you can do this you can either wrap it like that with your fingers or you can do the rotary method uh, I typically like rotary either way what you want to do is you want to stretch this a lot for the first couple of turns and then as you get further up the body and you just want to make sure you've got this equal segments then you start to relax it and that will create the nice tapered body that we're looking for and I usually just wrap that right up until the bead 
because I'm going to obviously wrap over this for the thorax area. And this UV chewy skin, that thread bites right into it. And then I'm going to work my way back to just at the hook point. So your thread, see, is going to be right there at the hook point. That's where our thorax is going to be tied in. And then I'll just work down a thread base and it kind of gets that uh, chewy skin tied down. And then I'll go ahead and tie in or bring up my th uh, wire. And again, I'm just going to follow the UV chewy skin segmentation and it just kind of gives it a more pronounced segmentation on that body. You don't want to pull it too tight or else you're, you'll lose the wire down into the chewy skin. Not a big deal, but you want the wire to be visible. And I'm just going to clip off that wire there. Okay, now we're at the roof thorax area. We're going to tie in a couple of things. First off, we'll tie in some of this copper hollow tinsel. Uh, it's a UTC product. Really flashy, fancy stuff. And I usually just tie that a little bit towards me when I tie that on because the thread is going to torque it over uh, and that chewy skin, again, it's going to bite down into there so it will actually pull that over a little bit more. And then our skinny skin. And again, this is this is Montana Fly Skinny Skin. This is a mottled gold color and it's got a nice little design on it. And just going to go right over the top of that and centered over my tinsel. And again we want to wrap that just to where the hook point is. And we'll pull that forward in a minute. I'm going to give a few wraps to make sure that's secured. And now we're going to go ahead and add some dubbing. And this is just some Senyo's laser yarn. I really like that and it's, kind of, it's the brownish. Uh, it's got some flecks of red and tan in there. It's a good damsel slash betis pattern color. And I'm just going to dub the thorax in here. Okay, once we've got that thorax dubbed, we're going to add our legs. And I've prepared some soft tackle. This is partridge. This is a dyed brown uh, Hungarian partridge. And you just want to cut it like that with a little V notch and set it right on top of where we're going to tie it in. Just like that. And what I normally do is I size these legs to be about where I want them. And then I'm going to do a soft wrap over the feather and enough that it bites in there but then I can also pull you want to pull this feather so that you get those fibers the right length that you want okay once we've got the right length on those I'm gonna go ahead and bring over the top with our skinny skin and the hollow tinsel and in the process of doing that you may want to preen back those leg fibers a bit and then I'm going to give a couple of wraps to secure it adjusting my tinsel and skinny skin if I need to before I give it the really hard wrap I only need a couple there like so now I'm going to pull back this skinny skin, clip off the remainder of the partridge feather. And then this is another one where I want to hide the thread, so I'm going to put my finger there, pull it right over the top of the bead, and then just give it a wrap or two in front of the bead. So that way, both of my thread wraps are coming over the top of the bead. Those will disappear because I'm going to pull these over and it will hide those thread wraps. Again, not a big deal, but if you want it to look clean, you can do that. Okay, now the next step, once we have the thread over there, is we're going to pull the skinny skin and the tinsel at the same time, again centering them, 
make that tight and then take a wrap, a loose wrap, and then tighten as you go around. That will conform to the shape of the bead and tighten that with a couple, three good tugs. And so now we've got that whole thing going over the bead there. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim the tinsel and the skinny skin. And I like to secure that a little bit more with a few figure eight wraps around the mono eyes. So that's what we're left with there. And then the final step here is just to dub that head. Same color dubbing. And we're just going to go around, do a couple figure eights, complete that off right in front. And then tie off and whip finish. And there's the Dams of Betis.